let's kind of go over the fundamentals here of what this change in slope solver is. So if you scroll down, right, you'll see there, well, you know, obviously, first of all, there is, there you go. So there is an explanation there. So it's not really that sophisticated once you kind of grasp its kind of simple nature. Um, but what really helps visualize what it's doing here um, is this image. Right. So I have this image up over here. And so I'm actually going to use this here to help explain. There. We can just stick that off to the sign like that. So what this image is portraying is the the curvature nature right of indicators and charts in general right uh, I, you know the stochastic is uh, clearly a close resemblance here but you know your moving averages also do the same thing right as price goes up and down right your indicators are your moving averages right are changing changing angles right changing slope throughout this uh, yeah, curvature you know life cycle here so what it's doing is you know it's telling you where 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 is the angle of that indicator you know within this cyclical life cycle right so for example right most people you know I guess you know if you're building a system you know or even if you're you know really kind of analyzing your the details of your indicator, such as a moving average or stochastic or maybe a MACD or something like that, right? You know, so if you're trading a with the trend type of system, right, you're really going to be focused on this increasing rate of rise, right? So as the indicator begins to turn up and it's increasing, 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 right? And also you probably would be interested in uh, number two here, right? Which is the indicator still uh, increasing. You know, it's just not uh, the the slope of that increase is not the slope is not increasing anymore, right? It's still uh, sloping upward, but the slope is beginning to taper taper off, right? So to speak, right? And then the green number three right is where the slope is tapering off even more so right and then eventually it might turn over right so um yeah ha have no doubts right obviously you know this solver cannot predict when an indicator is going to roll over right it's just analyzing the angle um or the slope of the indicator you know that you're analyzing there and it tells you where it is within this uh, curvature uh, so let's kind of go over the numbers here um, and actually to do that let's also get the solver on here as well so let's put the change in slope solver on the board there we go Let's connect that up. Let's see. Yeah, let me go ahead and put that whole moving average on here as well. All right. So let's just type in whole. Use a little search box there. And let's see. Uh, it's not finding it. Oh, that's because it's HMA. Not whole. There we go. All right. So. The H stands for whole. Yeah, let's see. I have a 40 period on the chart, I believe. Let me just double check. Uh, yeah, 40 period. All right. So now that we have the solver on the board here, um, now we can kind of see what these numbers are referring to. Right? So these numbers in this image are referring to the numbers of the output here right so you can see the outputs are numbered one through six right and so one th through six you know is that referring to 
the long output or the short output. Um, yeah, so these numbers, you know, are um, are correlated where where the slope of that indicator is, you know, within this curvature life cycle, right? And, you know, Bloodhound also, you know, have the understanding that, you know, Bloodhound is calculating the long output separate from the short output, right? So when you, when you are utilizing fuzzy logic calculations, yeah, you have to have two separate calculations here, right? So that's why this image has a, you know, a green number and a red number. So to identify what these outputs are referring to, right? So the number one, um, right? So for a long output, right? You're going to get a long output when the indicator is rising here um, and it's in an increasing rate of rise. And then the opposite for a short output, right? So the red number one is here, right? So when the indicator rolls over and it begins to fall, right? So as the indicator rolls over and starts sloping down, and as long as it's falling faster and faster and faster, right? So as long as the slope keeps angling down faster and faster and faster, right? Then you're gonna get a short output, right? So number one here is yeah, you're going to get a short output when the indicator is falling down, right? So number one uh, is used for both long and, sh well, I'm sorry, all the numbers are used for both long and short output. It just depends on, you know, where the indicator is, you know, within this curvature uh, cycle here. Right? So there you go. Number one, when the indicator is rising, uh, right, increasing its rate of rise, uh, and number two for the short, right, is if the indicator is uh, falling here and it's increasing its rate of fall. Right? And then we can see the green number two is it's still rising, it's just not angling up as steeply, right, it's beginning to kind of just ever so slightly roll over. And so the short number two right, is when the indicator is still falling, but, you know, it, it, it's not um, angling down, it's not sloping down as steeply as it was previously on the previous bar. Yeah. So, so that's what these numbers are all referring to here. Yeah. So now, with that understanding, let's kind of take a look um, at things. There we go, shrink this up a little bit there. All right, so let's take a look at this point here. Um, and you know what, let me do, shoot. I meant to do one more thing here to help better visualize, you know, where the angle uh, of these indicators are. So let's, yeah, let's take a moment here to finish setting up my, or yeah, better, to better set up my chart here. All right, so there you go. So these dots will help visualize um, the angle a little bit better of, of the indicator here, right? So stretching this way out, right? So obviously we can see the HMA, right, is sloping up and you'll notice, right, as the HMA begins to roll over, right the short output begins to increase and then 
after it finally rolls over, right? So we can see that, right? It rolls over after this bar here, right? So from here to here is when it rolls over. And then the short output, you know, finally goes all the way to 100%, right? So what is, you know, so what's going on here where the short output begins to increase here, right? Well, let's take a look at the outputs here. So what that increase is going to be is it's going to be uh, 5 and number 4 here. Because if you notice, it says opposite direction, but, you know, increasing, right? So number four is opposite direction, but greatly turning. And number five is opposite direction, but turning, right? So the but turning, so number five is only 0.33. And number four, where it says greatly turning, right? There's a larger number in there, 0.66. And so if we go to the image, let's see, try and find a spot where we can see all this on the chart. Um, so if, yeah, if we take a look at the image here, right? So number four and number five, remember we're looking at the short output on the chart. So we have to be looking at the red um, numbers here, okay? So number five is where the indicator is still rising, but it's, you know, beginning to, it's not rising as quickly as it was on the last bar. Right, so the last bar, it was rising really quickly. And now the slope is angling, at, right, angling over just ever so slightly, right? And then number four is the, you know, the indicator is still rising, but it's angling over a little bit more from the previous bar, right? So when we look at this, at the chart, really stretch this out, <clears throat> right? We can see, so the HMA was rising and rising and rising. Um, and actually, yeah, we had this one period between these two bars where it actually angled up. Uh, it angled up a little bit more, right? And we can see there's no short output there. So, yeah, so the HMA was beginning to kind of roll over as price, you know, consolidated a little bit, right? And then we had this solid up bar, and, you know, for some reason that pushed the HMA up. You know, again, you know, uh, the slope of the HMA angled up greater than it did previously. And then it begins to roll over here. Um, yeah, obviously, as price is going down here, right? And so, so between these two, uh, nope, sorry, between those two bars there, right, the slope begins to drop off. All right, it's still rising, but again, it begins to drop off. And so the output, uh, the short output begins to increase. And then on the second bar, the slope is dropping off even further, right? So the slope here is less than the slope of you know, the previous two bars, right? Still rising, but that slope is beginning to roll over, right? Taper off, right? And then tapers off one more time until it eventually rolls over, right? Um, yeah. So that essentially is exactly what this solver does, um, is it helps you to try and, you know, identify, you know, where your indicator is, you know, within this um, curvature, you know, life cycle of an indicator, right? As your charts, you know, go up and down throughout the day. So let's take a look at, here we go. Yeah. So let's take a look right here where it, you know, a, a classic, um, right, um, moving average, you know, going, um, sloping down and then rolling over and then sloping back up, right? And so again, right, we can see as the HMA is sloping down, sloping down, sloping down, right? And so again, the angle or the slope of this is falling 
more and more and more. You know, it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of hard to tell. Maybe if we stretch this out even more. Yeah, that helps a little bit, right? So you can see the angle is, is um, falling down steeper and steeper, you know, for these three bars. And therefore, right, so where we're at is where we're at where the red number one is, right, or the green number six. So we're actually in this phase here where it's increasing rate of fall, right? So the angle is steepening going downward, downward, and downward. Right? And then, um, yeah, we had this nice large up bar, right? And then the that move, right? And then the HMA begins to roll up. And so now the slope um, is not falling as quickly, right? The slope is still downward, but it's beginning to rise a little bit and a little bit. Um, and so therefore the, the short output, right, begins to taper off, but then the long output begins to increase there. So, um, you know, let's kind of take a look at maybe some, uh, you know, so most people aren't making fuzzy logic systems here. So, you know, how am I, uh, you use this, um, you know, more practically for a a um, a digital type of system here, and so it depends on you know what you're building there. So, so if you're building a you know with the trend kind of system, you're probably only interested in number one and number two, right? So number one, right, is when the indicator switches from you know uh, falling to now rising right and it has a steep rise you know and then number two would be well it's still rising here but you know it wasn't rising as quickly as it was on the last on the last bar here right and then for the short output right the indicator rolls over right and you, and you begin to have this increasing rate of fall Right, so there's number one and number two for the short output. So if we take a look at this, yeah, here's kind of a great classic look there, right? So your moving average rolls over and it begins to fall, 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 you know, um, where the angle is angling down more and more and more and more. Right? And then as it rolls back up, right, the angle is increasing and increasing and increasing and increasing, right, until it, right, until it eventually just kind of, you know, tapers off there. Yeah, so that would, you know, typically I, I think most people would be interested in number one and number two if you're designing kind of a with trend type of system there. Um, now, if you're, you're building a, a counter trend, system here you're most likely going to be interested in number two and number three right so number two and number three where you're looking to predict that rollover there right. so let's see here let's uh, let me I'll put in point five and one there So, as we look at this, uh, let's see here. Oh, no, hang tight. Um, sorry, five, yeah, five and four. There we go, five and four. And I did two and three. So, all right, let's clear those out. So in five, I'll put 0.5, and four, I'll put a one. There we go. That's what I was looking for. All right. So, um, so you know, obviously, you know, markets aren't perfect, and no indicator is perfect here. So, you know, obviously, you know, expect some head fakes here. But, you know, what we're what you're gonna see, you know, on average, um, is 
as that indicator you know begins to roll over you know right you might obviously you know there's no single standalone condition that's going to tell you exactly what's going to happen but you know but if we look over here right we can see that at least you know with the 40 period hma price hasn't broken below it right so so if you're trying to you know use this for a heads up you know visually you know if you're a discretionary trader you know this will catch your attention here right but most likely you, you know we can see that you know you uh, at least you know on this narrow snapshot here you, know, you can see that well you know maybe you would take this you know um, change in slope you know uh, angle uh, drop off here a little more seriously if price crossed below you know the moving average here right yeah so when it crossed below we can see that when it's giving us this heads up you know that was a little more accurate there so and same thing right on this long output here so once price crossed the moving average there you know and and we got that that 100 percent output which is again is number four here right number four and so number four there we go right so the indicator is sloping down but it's in this state where it's it's beginning you know where it's in that potential state of rolling over you know, right just before it actually uh re reverses upwards right so it would go from number four to number one so that's what the that's that's this long output here right is number four um yeah and so there you go a bunch more examples so yeah it looks like um yeah it looks like this kind of uh, adding in this second requirement of price needing to cross you know the hma seems to be yeah pretty lucky here for just you know throwing something out there on the spot um so we can see right the the angle of the hma it's still rising but it's ever so slightly just kind of you know falling off falling off falling off right but price hasn't crossed below there yet you know but then once price does finally kind of cross below right then the hma then rolls over so let's take a look let's at some other spots yeah so there we go let's see some other examples here um well yeah you know i think those two examples really are the vast majority of you know the way somebody might uh want to use this here right so either using number one and number two or using number four and number five here and the um, default settings here let's see if I can remember what they were I think it was 1.66 and then 0.33 and then 0.66 and 0.33 Right, obviously, you know, uh, you know, when you're looking at the the angle of the slope, right, you know that that's not black and white, right? It's very subjective. So therefore, you know, this this solver definitely fits in better with a fuzzy logic type of system here, right? And that's what the default outputs are. You know, they're set up for fuzzy logic there. Uh, this type of systems, so. And yep, there we go. Um, all right, yeah, so let me also, we'll plug in the stochastics there and take a quick look at that.
All right, so um, I have the stochastics plugged in here. Uh, and, you know, again, you know, this, as you would expect, you know, the, the um, you know, the curvature of the stochastics is, you know, going to be very, very similar to the HMA that I've got here. Uh, so let's turn off five and number four here, there. So, uh, so again, you know, if you kind of forget how this works, just remember, you know, just focus on number one, two, and three, right? And that'll kind of bring everything back. Um, all right, so when you only have one, two, and three, you know, turned on, and, you know, and then you look at your indicator, right? You can realize that, oh, yeah, that's right. So as soon as your indicator, you know, reverses direction, right, reverses angle there, reverses the slope, um, right, you're going to get that um, number one type of output there, which is 100%, right? And then, right, and then your indicator is going to, at some point, right, begin to kind of roll over there. There. So there we have it. Right. So, um, yeah, so we can see here, right. So maybe one of the benefits, you know, one way this, that you could use this change in slope is, you know, if, uh, maybe with, uh, stochastics or an RSI, you know, and looking for those oversold and, um, overbought areas and, and, you know, hopefully trying to get a heads up on when the indicator might begin to roll over, right? So obviously, um, you know, using number one and two, you know, let's turn number three off like so. All right, obviously the the stochastic has, has already uh, reversed on you, right? It's already, yeah, reversed upward, you know, in which case you could just use an, an inflection solver to identify those reversal, you know, those reversal points there. You know. So if you wanted to kind of try and get a heads up, then really we would be using number four there. Right. Yeah, so looking at the stochastics here, right? So there's our short output in the oversold territory, right? And actually that one, you know, predicted it pretty darn good uh, since it was oversold. And over here, um, I'm sorry, overbought. And so over here in the oversold area, you know, again, that, you know, a little more accurate um, in the oversold area. And take a, a look here. Yeah, so here, All right, a little more useful, uh, right? We're getting a short output in the overbought area. So, right, a little more useful there. So, right, and let's see, yeah. So that that uh, long output there, you know, deep in the oversold area. So, right, and again, that would be number four. Right, number four is output. So if we take a look, all right, so so if you're looking for a reversal downward in your indicator, right, number four there is when right when your indicator is has be, has started to roll over for at least two bars. Right. And let's see, number four for the long output. Right, so the indicator is uh, sloping down, but it's beginning to kind of, you know, possibly roll over for at least two bars. Right. So let's kind of get into some of the technicals here, and we'll wrap this up with the technicals. You know, so what is the difference between, you know, number two and number three? Right, number two and number three. What is the difference there? So the difference is number two 
is going to be the first bar where the slope began to uh, not rise as quickly, right? So, so it's the first bar on the decreasing rate of rise. So let's see here. Um, yeah. Let's put this back to normal again. There. And let's see here. Yeah, I think this, I think this spot illustrates it pretty good here. Um, all right. So looking at this area right here, right. So this is number one, right. So it 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 rolled up right reversed up and it's the the angle or the slope is rising 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 right so we can see it's angling up more and more and more and more until finally it begins to flatten out right so there we go right so between these two bars here right this this slope is not as steep as the previous two bars, right? And this is the first bar where that uh, the slope here is not as steep. So it's beginning to kind of roll over here. And then when you get to the second bar, right? So the second bar where the slope begins to kind of taper off, you know, that is number three. So number three is the second bar and beyond that, right? So you don't, you know, obviously you ne you'll never know how many bars it's gonna take to eventually roll over, right? So number three is all the bars where it's rolling over after number two, right? Or after the second bar there. So that's, yeah. So just to illustrate that, there. So we'll just turn on number three and take a look. So there we have it, right? So it's rolling over, rolling over. But then right here, right, we can see there is no long output there. And that's because, yeah, ever so slightly, it began to rise again. So the stochastic, the angle there, uh, got a little steeper there for one bar, right? Then it rolled over. So this would be a number two, right? So, um, or I'm sorry, it didn't roll over, but it's flattening out a little bit. And then it rolls over. So, it, so right here, it actually, um, let's see here. Yeah. So where, there we go. So where the dot is, right? That's number three. It rolled over, rolled over, but then it went into number one. So between these two bars, it actually increased its angle. So it went into number one for one bar and then uh, yeah, and then it went to number two, right? So this is number two right here, right? Because it, it rolled, it's starting to um, roll over here a little bit. So then it went from, yeah, so it went to one to two and then instantly rolled over here. So it went to number six, you know, <clears throat> yeah, because now it's actually angling down. So, so, right, then, so obviously, thus is the nature of indicators, <laughs> right? They don't always roll over perfectly. All right, so there you go. So there's the technical difference between number two to number three, right? Or for a downsloping indicator, right? Short side number two to number three is number two, again, is the first bar where you know it's sloping 
you know, it's still angling up or angling down, but it's beginning to kind of, it's beginning to flatten out and roll over. And then when you get to the second bar where that happens, then you get to number three. All right. So that is it for the change in slope. So one thing to note, right, the change in slope isn't telling you what the slope is. Um, and it's not measuring the slope, right? That is more of what the slope solver does, right? So if you want to actually, yeah, just simply know, you know, is my indicator sloping down or is it sloping up? Then you'd want to use the slope solver, you know, and if you want to, if you want to identify a certain steepness to the slope, you know, like maybe right here where it gets really, really steep. You know, if you want to identify this certain angle, you know, a minimum slope or down or, you know, minim minimum slope or up. Yeah, there you go. Two good spots, you know. So if you want to find this minimum, you know, slope word, um, then that's what the slope solver is for, right? So again, this is for identifying the changes in the slope, all right? This it's for identifying this where you are within this life cycle, you know, as indicators, you know, roll up and roll down and roll up again and roll down again. So, all right. So that should do it.